Picking up where we left off, we've got our guest book kind of established on the page. We've got a WYSIWYG editor, um, and everything's kind of working. We're capturing some data. We haven't made it extremely pretty, but we've given it some format. So the things I want to talk about in this video are input validation, preventing, uh, or not preventing, but securing from untrusted content. And then also I'm going to talk quickly at the beginning here about default button. We've got two buttons on this page. We've got a button to submit our form and then we've got this search button. What happens if I hit the enter key right now is it goes to the search page. Not exactly what we want. Now if someone's clicked up here we would want that to happen. But if someone just hits the enter key we really want it to be on this especially if anything down here has the focus. So to do that, we go back to Visual Studio and we look at our guestbook application. And basically we get the button ID from our button and on our panel that wraps everything here, or even this one, this inner one, we can set the default button equals the ID of our button. So now, of course, I have to rebuild to redeploy this file with the change. And if I go back to the browser, refresh the page. So now, as long as the focus is somewhere down here in our guestbook form, hitting the enter key is the equivalent of clicking the submit button. And you'll see we didn't fill out the captcha, so it didn't submit. But it did, it did try to submit, and it validation kicked in. So the enter key is now doing what we want it to do. Let's move on now to input validation. We've got an email address box here, and we've also got a website URL box here. It would be nice to make sure that the user enters a valid email and a valid URL. So we go back to Visual Studio, and below our email, we'll put a regular expression validator. Oops, that's supposed to be my ID. And the control to validate, we put the ID of our text box for email. And for display, we'll choose dynamic. And then we've got to have a validation expression. Now we've got something built into Mojo Portal we can leverage for that. So we'll go into the code behind here and we'll say control v dot validation expression equals security helper dot pretty sure that's where it is. There it is. And that was a convenient uh, regular expression. Now we also want to validate our website URL. And really, I should have not made this a closed-ended tag here. What I should have done is gone ahead and let it put the whole thing, and then I can put an asterisk in there just to draw the user's attention to it. And again, I need the control ID for the control to validate. Now, this time, I don't have a handy thing built into Mojo Portal for the validation expression, but I've got one here that I have scraped off the Internet, and I will just paste it in. And you can Google for regular expression validations for quite a few different common scenarios. Really, I'm not, I'm not sure. I would probably use a more restrictive one because this one looks like it's also allowing FTP URLs and such. So you might want to narrow it down some for, for this tutorial purposes. I'm just going to let that go as it is. Now, another thing that's kind of nice is to have a validation summary. So to use a validation summary, okay, which we'll put down here, The key 
for this is that there can be multiple things on a page with their own validations and we want to have kind of grouping so that we're just validating this and this uh, form might be on a page with other forms so we're going to give this a validation group and that's just basically giving it an ID and then we can take the same property and put it on our validators so that it's clear that they belong to that group. And even the button can have a validation group. Okay, so now we do need to still put you know, a message to be displayed if it doesn't pass the validation. So we will go ahead and copy this guy to here. Put error message equals and we'll do our Earl. And of course, we really should put these in our resource file. So they can be localized uh, into other languages. So we're going to go ahead up to our guestbook resource. And we'll go ahead and copy the text that we just hard coded here. that in and then we'll come back save this and we'll come back to the code and let's say guest book resources dot email validation line and we will do the same in our URL And then we will build. And then we will refresh our browser. And then now, if we try to submit the form again, well, let's see what happens if it goes. See, it's telling us that that's not right already when we tap out of it. So if we change it to now it likes it. And again it doesn't like that. Tab out it says okay. And this time we can submit and it works. And there it is, I was here. Okay, that's it for this clip. We just gotta keep these under 10 minutes. We'll see you in the next clip.